Hello everybody and welcome back for the weekly recap. Before we get started, make sure that you give me a thumbs up down below to encourage me to make more videos of this type and also subscribe to my YouTube channel where you'll find additional videos of this nature along with toolbox safety topic videos and leadership uh, training videos. Well, let's jump right in. For this past week, I haven't had the opportunity to get out into the field to visit with anyone. I've been fortunate enough to be on vacation. And I will be back next week and I look forward to being with you then. However, before I went on vacation, I decided that I was still going to present something to you in the field to make sure that we continue our progress with improving our safety culture. So what I've done is I've put together a PowerPoint around respiratory protection. It's not very long, it shouldn't take more than 10 minutes or so. But anyway, we'll jump right into that and uh, we'll go through these PowerPoints. All righty. Now, respiratory protection. Inhalation is one of the four main ways workers can be exposed to hazardous substances. If engineering and administrative controls cannot keep you safe from inhaling contaminated air, you need to wear respiratory protection. A respirator protects workers from breathing in dangerous substances when they work in a hazardous environment. A respirator is a device that covers at a minimum your mouth and nose. It is designed to improve the air your lungs breathe in. Respir respirators work by either filtering out contaminants from the air purifying the air, or supplying clean air to the user from an outside source. Now, there's about 5 million U.S. workers that are required to wear respirators at work. To wear a respirator, you must be trained, medically evaluated, and fit tested before you can even think about using a respirator. You must wear a respirator when you work in a hazardous atmosphere. Atmospheres are considered hazardous if they are immediately dangerous to life or health, that's IDLH, or contain contaminants over the permissible exposure level, known as the PEL, or the threshold limit value time weighted average, that's TLV-TWA. Now there are some typical air contaminants that we deal with on a regular basis, and those are normally dust, mists, gases, vapors, fumes, smokes, sprays, fogs, or it could be a combination of those things. You may need to wear a respirator when working in a confined space. If there is a potential for exposure to asbestos, silica, or hydrogen sulfide, sandblasting or welding. Your company must assess your workplace for respiratory hazards and provide you with appropriate respiratory protection when needed. Your company must provide you with a respirator appropriate for the hazard. Now there are several types of respirators. Some common respirators include the N95 or the dust mask. Those are what we see quite a bunch. And then you have an air purifying respirator. We call those half face. We, we use a lot of half face. And then there's the powered air purifying respirators. And they're no different than, than the APRs other than they have a motor that forces air past the filters 
to the user. Then we have a supplied air or hose line or airline respirator. Uh, that's uh, an airline that trails behind you out to a separate air source that comes from either the compressed air cylinders or, or from a compressor that's pumping air to you. And then we have the self-contained breathing apparatus, or SCBAs. Uh, these you carry on your back when you go into the uh, environment. Now the particulate respirators only protect you from particulates like dust and they're only used for low level hazards and they're usually disposable. Now an APR filters out contaminants using a cartridge. They're only effective if used with the right cartridge or filter based on what hazards are present. Cartridges are color-coded based on the contaminants they protect users from. And then the PAPR, they, like I said, they use a fan to draw air through the filter and send that air to the user. Now, it's much easier to breathe through, but you gotta remember to keep those batteries fully charged before you go to work. And they also use the same cartridges as the APRs. Now, you can, you can check that you're using the correct APR or PAPR cartridge based on what the hazards are and by using this color-coded chart. Now, this is just an example, okay? Make sure that the color codes on the cartridge, cartridges are correct. This is only a guide. Make sure you read the label to make sure you have the right kind. Sometimes you have combination filters, which would be a HEPA and an organic filter. You got to make sure that they're stacked properly so that they, they can t protect you properly. And then you have the hose line slash airline respirators. These give the user breathing air from an independent source using a cascade system of cylinders or a compressor. It protects against a higher concentration of contaminants. The hose line, now the hose line running from the respirator to the air source limits the user's ability to move. And there must be an escape self-contained breathing apparatus with the user in case something happens to the air supply. You can have something fall on the line and break it and, and, and destroy it. It could be pinched. Any kinds of, all kinds of things could happen. You could lose power at the compressor. Uh, there's a, numerous things that could happen. That's why there has to be an emergency SCBA with the user when they're using a hose line or an airline respirator. Now, SCBAs use their own tank to supply clean air to the user. Uh, the same as the airline, these protect against a higher concentration of contaminants. However, they're very heavy and require special training to use and maintain. Now, if your company requires you to wear a respirator, they've done their due diligence, they've done an assessment, and there's a hazard there and you must wear a respirator while you perform the task, you must be clean shaven because facial hair can interfere with the respirator seal. Facial hair is the common cause of seal, respirator seal leakage. Like the sign says, it's not PPE if it doesn't fit. You will be responsible for inspecting, maintaining, cleaning, and storing respiratory protection equipment of yours that you own. And you have to do it properly. The company issues you a piece of respiratory equipment, assume that it is yours and it is your responsibility to take care of. Protect yourself from hazardous atmospheres by wearing the appropriate respirator. If your company requires you to wear a respirator, remember you must be trained, 
medically evaluated and fit tested before you can wear one. That is absolutely critical. People, make sure that you receive the training, that you go to a healthcare professional and be medically evaluated to make sure you can wear that respirator without uh, it creating a dangerous condition for your health and make sure you're fit tested. All right, well, that's about it. I don't know how long that took exactly. Uh, I, I look forward to being back next week. But well, once again, thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys doing it. Make sure that you give me a thumbs up to encourage me to make more videos of this type. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel where you will find additional videos of this nature along with toolbox safety topic videos and leadership training videos. Until we see each other again, take care of yourself because you're number one. Make sure you look after your coworkers and ensure their safety. And I will see you in the field.